Hello, welcome to John Rose Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today we're reviewing five comics. Today we're reviewing the first five issues of Gen 14 Bootleg from 1996, which came out uh, two years after the initial series. So this, um, here's issue one. Here's issue two. There's issue three. There's issue four. And there's issue five. So we'll review them um, in order. So yeah, like Gen 13 bootleg, for people who don't know, is basically, uh, according to the to the info in the back, um, the, creat- the initial creators of Gen 13, which was like Jim Lee, J. Scott Campbell, some other guy, uh, needed time to work on to brainstorm for their new series, right, for Volume 2. So they they decided, hey, let's have um, creators uh, write, like, Gen 13 stories and pl- publish them in, like, uh, like, two or three issue arcs, right? So the first two issues of Gen, Gen 13 Bootleg is by Mark Farmer and Alan Davis, Uh before we go into that, we'll talk. We'll, we'll, for people who don't know who Gen 13 is, I'll explain. So Gen 13 is basically it was basically like Image Comics version of like X Men meets Harbinger by Valiant Comics, or like you know, it's basically like you got these uh, group of teenagers who have like powers called Gen Factor. Which is basically like the mutant X gene, and they get recruited by um, Lynch, who is like the Nick Fury of the uh, Image Comics universe, right? And then they become like a superhero team. So, like, you have like uh, Caitlin Fairchild as Fairchild. Her powers are she's basically uh, big and strong, and she has like uh, pheromones, apparently, like Jessica. Uh, what's her name? Like, Spider-Woman. Uh, yeah, she has, like, pheromones, so, like, every everybody constantly hit, hits on her. Um, you got Roxy, a.k.a. Freefall, I think that's her name. Her powers are, she can fly, shoot, like, air G beams, and create, like, force fields. You got Edward, whose name is Grunge, a hero name is Grunge, who can basically absorb, like, um, like, absorb the properties of like objects and co- like you know cover himself in that material so it's he's kind of like Colossus but if Colossus had to touch you know stuff so like if he wanted so if he were like to touch steel he'll be able to cover himself in steel there's like a point in like the second issue where he absorbs like this like He's stuck in this, like, you know, pocket dimension. He's able to absorb the energies of that pocket dimension. Becomes like a god. So you got Sarah, who, um, Sarah, who's called, uh, her hero name is Rainmaker. Which, I'm not exactly too familiar with her character. Like, in the five comics I've read, she's able to, like, shoot lightning and make, and, like, uh, control wind. And then you got Bobby here, who's uh, burnt out, right? So yeah, the the first two issues, um, which you gotta love that art by uh, Alan Davis. This is written by Mark uh, Mark uh, Farmer. Which yeah, the first two issues about like you know Lynch, which you can see Lynch here. He kind of looks like Thin Eastwood. Uh, yeah, Lynch gets contacted by the scientist saying, hey, I sent um, my superhero team into an alternate dimension trying to, like, you know, um, make their powers better, right? And they got lost, so uh, Lynch is going to send Gen 14 after them. But it turns out one of the scientists is an, actually an alien, right? So as soon as they, as soon as they, go, they go through... The alien attacks, and they get sent into this world where, like, their dreams come true. Like, Roxy, who's, like, the golf girl, uh, gets put into this, like, you know, uh, castle where she uh, gets attacked by evil versions of her friends. 
right? There's Grunge, her boyfriend, as a vampire. You got Rain, uh, Rainmaker is in this, like, private, like, you know, uh, jungle by herself, you know, naked. And uh, only Bobby's with her. And Caitlyn, who always wanted to be the leader of the team, is, like, you know, has this team of youngsters of superheroes who they're on a mission to take out this guy. He's, like, an evil version of Lynch. And uh, there's one of the kids there they were sent to re rescue. Right? So, yeah, in this, in issue two of that, you get the, you get the um, conclusion to that story. All right, so there's, yeah, this is where you, they get, they get told about the alien invasion, there's the aliens, they're like praying mantises, right, so this is pretty cool, yeah, it, it turns out like, you know, it turns out that Lynch knew that they were aliens the entire time, but risked her, uh, the team anyway. Uh, grunge, grunge saves the day from the aliens. And that, that's how that story concludes. So, like, obviously, these were cool, fun issues with good art, decent story. So, next, issue three, which I love this art, this uh, fantasy art. Very World of Warcraft, right? So, this, this book... I kind of hate this book because the entire book is written like this. So it's written like a short story with illustrations. Where, like, you know, our characters live in a... Our characters live in a fantasy world. They have to go and, like, you know, defeat this evil sorceress who can, controls, like, an army of monsters. Right? And, like, you know, our characters, you know, you have Caitlyn's, like, a knight. Uh, Roxy's like a thief. Rainmaker is like a sorceress elf who looks a, very much like Delit. Delit from um, from Wrecker of Lotus War. Uh, Grunge is like a dwarf, and Burnout is like a, a sorcerer. So you got like cool art, but I didn't mu <laughs> like all this reading, man. It was like you know it's, it sucks, but yeah, you got cool fantasy art. And it was a cool like one shot story. And like you, uh, and you find out that it was just like Roxy uh, telling like Grunge a bedtime story. So yeah, that was cool. That was by Dan Norton, who drew and uh, did, did the story, and Sandra o Hope did the inks, which the inks look cool. So issue four is another standalone story. Where I, I'm not sure if these, you get like a superhero team called Weapon Zero. I think I've heard of Weapon Zero before, but I'm not 100% sure. So yeah, you get this, uh, this comic book is by Louis, Luis and Walter Simonson. I've heard of Walter Simonson before. So yeah, in this book, called, this story is called Little Girl Lost. You got this girl who's part of this superhero team called... Weapon Zero, who's looking for one of their members that's lost, right? And they're in L.A. Uh, they're looking for this guy named Jamie. And she she and her, like, sidekick um, get separated from Weapon Zero and get attacked and think they're getting attacked by this robot. Really, it's like... Uh, it's like a stuntman on some, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. And she gets saved by Gen 13 from, like, a car. Gets introduced to them. Right? Apparently Gen 13's in L.A. to go see the premiere of the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Right? So, like, one, one of the bad guys of Weapon Zero sees, like... The um, five fin, which that's the girl's superhero name, right? Um, sees her by herself and sends down this robot to capture her, and the team fights it. Right, which is pretty cool. Second time around, the robot comes back. It's even more powerful, and our team team of heroes gets their butt kicked, and then the five fin. 
has to, the little girl has to transform into this uh, monster. You see the transformation here. So it's like the monster on the cover. And uh, to save him. And then you see the guy, the colonel from Weapon Zero telling him, hey, if you need help, call us. So that was a cool, fun issue, right? All the 90s, like, you know, uh, humor here, where, like, um, you have, like, my, uh, you have grunge, like, speak, like, um, talk like Michelangelo from the, from the teen, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. Right, and if you ever seen the Gen 14 cartoon, they pretty much talk like they do there. So the la the f the fifth issue, which is written by Terry Moore, with art by Tom uh, Coker. Right, here's issue five. Not a huge fan of this uh, art here, and lots of uh, lots of uh, let's say like lots of nipples through shirts. Like, nobody's wearing a bra here. So, yeah, this comic book is just, like, our team is, like, hanging out, having fun. Uh, they go out part partying, but, like, Caitlin Fairchild, you know, is, like, sick of getting hit on by guys and girls and decides to go to the library. She gets hit on by some guys. Uh, they don't take rejection. Here, look at this shit. <laughs> you can see, like, her nipples through her shirt, like, several times throughout the comic book. Yeah, the art, I'm not a huge fan of the art. Uh, one of them pulls out a gun. Yeah, he, she beats them up. She goes to the, um, library. Tries to get there before they close at 10. Gets her at 9.30. Only to get there and uh, to meet a guy, this guy, and then like time skips like half an hour into the future. She's trying to figure out, hey, what's going on, right? You do get an action scene where our characters uh, train in the rec room, right, find robots, which was funny. And then like, yeah, she goes to find out who that guy was she met, and she finds out, hey, that guy... Um, died like 50 years ago and he apparently invented time travel so to find out what happened next you gotta read the next issue yeah so I gotta say I gotta say I did enjoy these comic books they're um, they were fun fun reads right and uh, the art was mostly good through all of them but except for the last one um, you, you do have, like, kind of, like, average to not great, uh, average to bad dialogue. Being, you know, I find the characters, you know, interesting. I like the designs. Uh, you know, it's just like a fun 90s comic book, and I would give it, you know, a 6.5 out of 10. All right? Re really enjoyed this, uh this series so yeah that's it for uh this review guys my next review is probably going to be uh me reviewing what comics i got on free comic book day uh which is tomorrow and i have a job interview <laughs> i like who calls at like eight o'clock at night to, to like hey you have a job interview and i i gave those people like a resume like a year ago it's like who what the fuck I never had somebody, like, uh, I gave, like, a resume to call me, like, a year later after I gave them the resume. So, it's like, well, I have, like, you know, nothing to, you know, I got nothing to do uh, uh, on Saturdays. So, other than, the, you know, co going to the comic book shop. So, yeah, I'm going to, I have to, you know, hit up the job interview and, that, and uh, afterward, like, go to the comic book shop. Wish me luck, guys. All right, peace, 6.5, and uh, I would recommend. By the way, um, I got the first 20 issues of this series in my last comic book call, so we're going to be reviewing these, like, every, like, third review, which is people who don't, uh, are new to the channel, I review, I review, like, uh, how my comic book reviews work is I review I review 
DC Comics, Marvel, and then Indie. So, like, Image is technically Indie. So, yeah, which is, Indie is just, like, not DC and Marvel. So, like, every third review, I'm going to review, like, five more issues of Gen 13 Bootleg. Uh, 